few days ago i created this animation where i had to create bunch of candles scattered around the scene actually it turns out pretty easy so why don't i teach you guys how to achieve it inside geometry nodes to get started here i have a simple scene containing few simple meshes also i have three candle assets in a separate collection and also i have this simple flame object that has a flame texture as emission color and our candles have a wax material to scatter the candles i add a bezier curve object go to edit mode and select this draw tool this allows me to draw curves in the scene in default it uses this cursor method but here i select surface now i can draw on top of any surface in the scene this is what we are going to use for scattering the candles so select all and delete them now i started drawing curves where i want my candles to be Now come back to object mode and let's rename it to candle scatter. Go to geometry nodes workspace and create a new geometry node setup. Give it a proper name and pin it so that this window won't change even if I select a different object. To scatter our candles first we need to convert this curve into a bunch of points. For that, add curve to points node. Immediately, you will see this huge mess. That is because our individual point size is too big. So, to reduce it, I add point set point radius node and give it a small radius. I change this mode to length. Now, I can tell this node to create a point at every point 17 meter in, in the curve. This way, we can have an even distribution of points in every curve. Now, let's replace these points with candles. Drag the candle collection to the scene. Click on Relative and tick Separate Children. This will treat every object inside the collection as a separate object. Now, to change our points to candles, we need to instance them to each point. For that, shift A and add instances, instances on points node. Then plug our collection to instance socket. This will instance our candles to every point, but it picked the whole collection to each individual point. To randomly pick a separated object in the collection, tick this pick instance option. And just like that, we have our candles scattered on the surface but it all look uniform right now so before we start randomizing this to make our process easier i go to candles collection and scale each of them roughly to the same size in other words try to match the distance between the flame origin and the ground contact and apply the scale having all these candles initially at a same scale will make things handy when we start adding the flames. To start randomizing the candles, first I'll break the even distribution. For that, I drag from this selection socket and search for random value node. This will give us a random boolean value, which means 0 or 1 to every single point. Every point that got a 0 will not turn into a candle. By changing this probability value, you can control the selection. Now, let's randomize the rotation. Drag from the rotation socket and search for random value node. This time, we keep the method as vector. What this does is, it will rotate the instances to a random value between this min and max values. Since I only want it 
to rotate along the z-axis, I change the maximum x and y to 0. This way it only rotates on z-axis. To set our minimum z-rotation to 360 degrees, here in the z-socket I type tau, tau. This will give us the float value equal to 360 degrees. Now our candles are randomly rotated along the z-axis. Now let's do the same for the scale. Add a random value node and change the min and max. Here I kept the min and max difference between x and y to a low number and gave the z value considerably big difference because I wanted the candles to have roughly the same radius but considerably different in its height. To have more easy control over these candles scale, I add a vector math node and change the method to scale. This will work like a multiplication for all the axes at once. Now changing this value, I can scale up and down all the candles without losing its randomization. Since I almost done with candles, I drag this scale socket to group input node and call it candle scale. Give it a proper min and max value. What this does is it gives me this outside control of that value in the modifiers tab. Now I select all these nodes and hit shift P to frame them and give it a label. Give it a color as well. Since we are done with the candles, let's add the flame. I drag from our points node and add instances on points node. Since we made a selection for our candles, let's drag that to this selection socket as well. Now I bring our flame object to the scene. Set it to relative. Now to see both candles and flames, I add geometry, join geometry node and plug the candles and flames to it. We should see our flames. Let's see. Click as instance. Still no sign of the flames. Wait. It's there. Our flame is small so it currently inside the candles. So to bring the flames to its correct position, I can change the position of the points before it turn to flames. For that, add set position node. Since we change the height of the candles randomly, we need to account that to this as well. So drag from here and search for XYZ and select separate XYZ node. From here, we can take the Z scale of the candles and plug it to combine XYZ node and plug that into offset. It did offset our flames on the Z axis, but it is too much. And that is because this scale value works as a multiplication to the initial scale of the candle mesh. So we also need to take that value to the flame offset. This is why I set the candle's scale to the same size earlier. Otherwise, we have to calculate the flame offset specific to each candle. And that is a lot of unnecessary work. Let's see our candle's set scale. It is about 0.09 meters. So I add a math node and multiply the scale with 0.09. Now our flames are in the correct position. Now if you want, you can change this to multiply add and give this a small positive or negative number to further change the offset. And just like before, I'll randomize the scale.
Now I select all these nodes, frame them and call it flames. Slowly and slowly our node setup getting bigger. So it is handy to organize your nodes like this. Now you can see our candles works perfectly. But we have a slight problem. I add a camera to the scene and align the view to the camera and enable this camera to view option. Now focus on the flames when I move the camera. From front it's okay but as the camera moves to the side it is clear that our flames are just a 2D card. This will break the illusion. So we need to make sure our flames always rotate with the camera. In other words, we have to track the rotation of the flames to the camera. To create that inside geometry nodes, I drag the camera to the node setup and change it to relative. Then I add a subtract node and subtract each instance's position from it. Then I plug this to align Euler to vector node and plug that to our rotation. Set the pivot to Z and pick the right axis. In this case, it's Y. To my understanding, I find this bit tricky to explain, but basically what we did was we created Blender's track to constraint inside geometry nodes. So, it is working. Let's frame these few nodes too. To make this even better, especially in animation, let's add some movements to the flame. For that, I add a rotate instances node. Here I want to rotate along the y-axis back and forth to give a wiggle-like movement to the flames. To make this happen automatically with the time, I add a scene time node. This gives us our current frame in the animation from seconds and in frames. To create that wave movement, I drag from seconds and add a sine math node. This will convert our time to a sine wave pattern, which goes from minus one to positive one. Now set the movement random to each frame, add a random value node and gives it a small min and max value. Then multiply it with our sine wave. Now plug this to a combined XYZ node's Y socket and plug the output to rotation. Now when I go through the timeline, our flames start to move. It is a bit too much. So I reduce these numbers. Now to add offset to the animation, I add a math node and add a small value. This way, flames rotation animation will have a slight offset even in the frame zero. If you want to change the speed of the animation, change this to multiply add and change multiplier value to increase or decrease the speed. Now add a group input node and extract the necessary values. And just like that, we have our candles scattering setup. Now you can add more candles anywhere in the scene. So, I hope you learned something cool, something useful, I mean, that's what we like to do. We not only create stuff, we let you create with us. 
hit the like button comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to hellfx learn so you won't miss out when the next video drops so until next time